Hi guys, come on in. I'm here to do my uh, book club number 48 of A Radical Awakening, my dog-eared book. So come on in. It's been a while since I've uh, been on Instagram. I've been recovering from my daughter going to school and finally being at college. So just taking a little sabbatical. But I'm happy to have you all here. And uh, in my clients' lives right now, what's coming up a lot is just how does one let go? How many of you here have had a problem with letting go? Is letting go hard for you? Letting go of a grudge, letting go of a betrayal, letting go of a relationship, just the letting go, meaning you keep uh, regurgitating something and you cannot shift your energy and you cannot change your emotional spiritual lane how many of you here have had a, a hard time letting go of a relationship or a grudge um a memory a trauma um and tell me what you think is the reason why you can't let go so letting go is difficult because of one reason only we identify with that being of us, that version of us that was involved in that situation. So if we are in a relationship, we identify with that person in the relationship. We identify with who we are in the relationship. If we have been betrayed, it's because we so identified with that person who gets betrayed. So in short, the reason we have a hard time letting go is because we deeply identify with who it is we were in that situation. So when that situation turns out to be other than what we thought, the relationship ends or the person betrays us or the person, um, you know, hurts us in some way, then because we so identify with that person, when that relationship changes, it's like we have died. It's like something in us has uh, been destroyed. What we don't realize is that the only thing that has been destroyed is our identification with who it is we, we were. So this is really hard because when you're in the moment, you're not thinking, I'm identifying, I'm attaching. You're just in that relationship. So when that relationship changes, that's when the pain hits and you think it's the relationship. It's not the relationship. It is your identification with who you were in the relationship. And this is really hard. So if you are an owner of a dog and your dog dies yes part of it is you miss the dog but a lot of it is your relationship to yourself as the owner of the dog you miss that as well and i'll explain why i'm saying that if you were a wife and you're no longer a wife Yes, of course, you may miss your husband or, or your wife or your partner or not. But a lot of it is because you were identified as the wife. If you were a best friend and your best friend betrays you or your sister betrays you, a part of it is the shock of the betrayal. But a lot of it is because you were so identified as that person in that sisterhood or in that friendship. So... All of it boils down to our identification with that role, with that idea of us, with our ego. And because we identified in ego, we have ownership and control. And when that relationship ends, Is my connection clear? Sorry about that. So our old identification with that person we were 
Yes, toxic attachment messes us up in the present moment when that relationship is no more. So until we understand what is hard to let go, what is hard to let go, we will keep suffering. You see, in the moment, I always say to my clients who have lost a relationship, for example, I say to them, if she's not here, she's not meant to be here. If he's not here, he's not meant to be here. And they're like, but I want him to be here. I want her to be here. I go, but that is just your attachment to your fantasy. Is he here? No. Is she here? No. Is she saying sorry? No. Is he begging you and licking your toes? No. So the reality of the present moment is not here. They are not here. Ding, 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 ding. And we don't like that reality because we are attached to the fantasy of what we thought when we were in the relationship. So what we thought back then in a different moment in time. So this is really hard for everybody. And it's so hard to let go because we were so deeply invested in who we were. And that's why present moment living, living in the now, living in the now, living in the now is the only way to live in a transcendent way. So in my life, I tell people all this all the time, when I bought my first house, it was so exciting. It was a real house. It wasn't a, a dingy, you know, college dorm situation. And I had a garden and I had like real bathrooms. And But I remember walking into my real first house and I told myself, Miss Shefali, you will not attach to this house. You will not attach to this house. This is not your house. It is a dwelling. It is an abode. It is five walls or whatever, 10 walls. It is not your house. Because I knew I was loving it so much that I, if a storm came or a flood or say I couldn't pay the mortgage anymore, I would want to die. So I knew do not attach. Do not attach. It is not wise to attach to anything in the form because form is essentially impermanent. Don't attach. You know, when I got married for the first time, I've only been married once but, and I never will be married again. But that time, I never wore a ring. I never wore any adornment because I knew that any form is impermanent. And the 